with the exception of the Creeper, the Enderman is Minecraft's most well-known mob. But there is far more than meets the eye to the dark and lanky figure. Few things in Minecraft have as much mystery and ambiguity to their origins and reason for being. Who are these shadowy figures, and what do they want? To find the answer, we must examine the clues, both subtle and hidden in plain sight. In doing so, we can learn about the true story of Minecraft. Welcome to Deep Dive, the first of a series of episodes where I try to learn about the strangest and most obscure parts of games. The Endermen is a great place to start. They are an ocean of mystery. Join me for a dive beneath the waves. Endermen are different from other mobs in many ways. They're neutral mobs that only attack if provoked. They can pick up blocks, and they spawn in all three dimensions. Perhaps nothing is more interesting than their teleportation capabilities. Seemingly at will, they can almost instantaneously move up to 32 blocks away. When we look at the other Minecraft mobs, this is such a unique ability. Zombies, skeletons, and their variants can walk. Spiders can climb, but so can real life spiders. And several mobs can fly, although these are typically more advanced enemies, such as the Phantom or the Ghast. But in the overworld, no other mob can teleport. If we can figure out a way to understand how teleportation works, then perhaps this will set us on a path to understanding who the Endermen are. To do so, we must travel to the end. This place is dominated by the Endermen, but they're not the only life form here. In fact, they're not even the most populous. In terms of sheer numbers, chorus trees vastly outnumber Endermen. But retro, that's not fair, you say, because chorus trees are plants. And you'd be exactly right. But I'm going to make the argument that the chorus tree is the root to solving the mystery of the Endermen. Soon, you'll see why that's important. Let's take a look at some properties of the chorus tree. It was based off the Joshua tree, endemic to a small region of the American West. Chorus trees have multiple branches and can grow to very tall heights. They also produce chorus flowers. Planting a chorus flower on instone is enough for a new tree to grow. This is not too atypical. There's a phenomena called vegetative reproduction, where a new plant grows from the fragment of a parent plant. So everything is good, right? Well, not quite. The strangest thing is the chorus fruit, which comes from the plant body when broken, not from the flower as we would typically expect. This fruit also does not contain seeds. We can't craft chorus tree seeds from the fruit in the same way that we can with melon or pumpkin. Again, this can happen in real life, so nothing we've seen so far is strictly out of the question. The chorus tree is just a plant that happens to have some unusual characteristics. But everything changes when we actually take a bite out of the chorus fruit. We then discover its most important property. It allows the player to teleport short distances randomly. My theory suggests that this right here is the first place where teleportation occurs in the Minecraft universe, as it's the only non-sentient lifeform that allows this to happen. Since right now we're trying to understand teleportation, I'm going to make a list called the Teleportation Pyramid. The bottom of the pyramid will have the most simple types of teleportation, those which have the fewest requirements and are the most common in Minecraft. As we work our way up, we'll find more and more complex types of teleportation, with fewer and fewer natural occurrences. Hopefully, this will create a picture of how teleportation works. So, I'm going to put chorus fruit teleportation at the very bottom of the pyramid for several reasons. Within the end, it's by far the most widely available form of teleportation, but it's also the weakest. There's no way to decide where to go, and its range is only 8 blocks. My argument is that all other forms of teleportation are either enabled by or inspired by the chorus fruit. It's the common ancestor. If we go far enough back, we'll always end up at the chorus fruit. And there's a big piece of evidence for this in the end, the shulker. Shulkers can teleport. When breaking the block they sit on, they'll teleport up to 17 blocks away to land on another block. This is actually pretty important for a few reasons. First, it seems fairly likely that their teleportation is based upon chorus fruit. Cooking chorus fruit results in popped chorus fruit, which can be used to craft purple blocks which look very similar to shulkers. It's not a stretch to think that shulker shells are actually derived from chorus fruit, and that this has something to do with their teleportation capabilities. The second interesting thing is that it's implied that shulkers have some level of sentience. They can choose where their teleportation takes them, since they'll always land on another block if they can find one. This is the first place we see control teleportation. Somehow, shulkers have managed to harness the properties of the chorus fruit. This puts them squarely above chorus fruit on the teleportation pyramid. But how? What are they doing that allows them to control their teleportation instead of just randomly zipping around?
We'll get to that soon. This is all well and good, but you may be wondering what shulkers have to do with Enderman. After all, you clicked on this video to learn about Enderman, not Chorus Fruit. So let's switch gears for a little bit and talk about them. I think it's clear that the Endermen are the most intelligent mob within the end, and perhaps in all of Minecraft. I mentioned a few of these features in the Iceberg videos, including their human-like speech. But one of the clearest indicators of their intelligence is their building capability. This is one of the things that makes Minecraft, well, Minecraft. It's even in the name. Fundamentally, we can boil the game down into destroying things in the world, mining, and building things in the world, crafting. Lots of mobs can destroy things, such as the creeper. The Endermen are the only mob which can do both, by picking up and placing blocks. Endermen are creators at heart, the mob which is the truest embodiment of what Minecraft is. Their home of the end, however, is a very limited place. There's an extremely small number of blocks to work with. They can use endstone and create purple blocks from chorus trees, but beyond that, there's just not much. So, being the creative beings that they are, they tried to find unique ways to use their limited materials. Somehow, the Endermen were able to develop the Ender Pearl, a much, much more powerful teleportation device than chorus fruit. The word pearl is very important. What is a pearl? Well, it's a hard object produced by mollusks, such as oysters or mussels. These animals often have hard shells with a soft, fleshy interior, and the pearl develops on the inside. Does that remind you of anything we've seen in the end? That description sounds very similar to the shulker. What if ender pearls grow naturally in shulkers, and it's the reason that shulkers can control their teleportation abilities? Could the endermen have recognized this and figured out a way to harvest the pearls? This happens in real life, as cultured pearls are commonly produced using mussel or oyster farms. We can only find shulkers in inn cities. Perhaps the Endermen built these cities as farms for shulkers. There's a massive center column full of them, and they're also found scattered about the various rooms. The Endermen farmed thousands of shulkers, removing enough Ender Pearls so that every Enderman could have the ability of controlled teleportation. So let's take a look at the teleportation pyramid again. I'm going to put Ender Pearls at the same level as shulkers. I think they're very closely connected, and it's hard to know for sure which came first. The Endermen are a bit tricky. I'm inclined to think that they actually cannot teleport naturally. They need an Ender Pearl as a tool. The only reason that they can teleport further away is because they're more intelligent than the Shulkers, but both are using Ender Pearls to control their teleportation. So I'm going to put them on the same level, but connected to the Pearl. If my theory is true, then this is what we've got now. Intelligent Endermen who can build structures. They've used these structures as massive shulker farms, allowing them to teleport between islands in the end. But even with this capability, they're still stuck in a barren wasteland. So, inevitably, they start to think about the potential of teleportation. Is it possible to use this newfound power in a way that can give them the resources they need to build more things? Is there more to see than just the wasteland of the end? I think that these questions led them to the development of the portal technology that allowed them to travel to the overworld. They cleared out a massive island in the inn for safety, then created inn gateways to ensure that they would be the only ones who could teleport to and from the island. Then they constructed the portal in this safe zone, a thousand blocks away from the rest of the islands. I don't think they knew exactly how this technology would work, which is why they were so cautious. But somehow they figured it out, and their portal worked. They sent some brave scout innermen into the portal equipped with pearls and other supplies. The scouts teleported to a very strange world indeed, with mysterious terrain, plants, and creatures. They were also shocked to find that there was no portal back home to the end. These Endermen were trapped in a bizarre dimension with no clear path back, and more importantly, no way to communicate to the others that they had survived. However, the dimension they spawned into was rich in resources. Hundreds of blocks they had never seen before were suddenly available, if only they could figure out a way back to the end. But it was a dangerous world too. This new dimension was rampant with a mysterious blue substance that burned their skin. Even worse, it fell from the sky sometimes. The Endermen needed a safe place to live while they figured out what to do. A stronghold, if you will. So that's what they did. The Endermen got to work deep underground, away from the rain and various beasts that roam the surface. Strongholds have a very similar block composition to in cities, including bricks, stairs, and slabs. The Endermen quickly learned that stone was the most common material, and they built their strongholds accordingly. The Endermen spent a lot of time in this stronghold, researching their new world and learning everything that they could. 
They began work on a portal back to the end, but no matter what they did, they could never quite figure out how to activate it. This was, of course, only their second time using portal technology, and they still didn't have a clear idea of what the requirements were for interdimensional travel. At some point, one of the Endermen discovered a mysterious purple portal in the overworld. This connected to a different dimension, and, unlike their portal to the end, offered a two-way connection back and forth. The Endermen studied this portal, trying to figure out why it worked when theirs didn't. They knew that the portal was made of obsidian, an extremely hard material found in the overworld. They also realized that there was another important element, heat. The nether portal would only work if it was increased to a high enough temperature. Perhaps this was the secret that was missing in the return portal to the end. So the Endermen tried heating the end portal using lava, but it still wasn't enough. It somehow needed to be even hotter. They explored the nether more, looking for something that was hotter than lava. Eventually, they found it. Blazes. When killed, they dropped blaze rods, which could easily be ground up into a powder. And that was the key, the final piece to their puzzle. Combining blaze powder with ender pearls produced a new, more advanced teleportation device, an Eye of Ender. Finally, the Endermen were able to complete their portal back to the end. Upon return, the scouts were lauded as heroes. They had proven that interdimensional teleportation was possible. Remember, the Endermen in the end still had no idea whether their portal actually went to another dimension or just killed whoever entered. But now, there was proof. Live Endermen returning from the overworld. This allowed vast numbers of Endermen to leave the end and explore the overworld and nether. They developed their strongholds more fully, adding cages for experimentation on mobs, and libraries to store the secrets they had learned. They also built massive nether fortresses as a way to easily obtain blaze rods, which were useful for all sorts of things as they began to discover. Blaze rods could be used to create end rods, a source of light in their shulker farms. They were also crucial to potion brewing, a new technology that the Endermen experimented with in their cities. The Endermen also discovered that Eyes of Ender could create Ender Chests, allowing for easy interdimensional travel of riches from the overworld to the end. The Endermen were flourishing as a society, and they grouped stationed in all three dimensions, some in the end, some in strongholds, and some in other fortresses. They had limitless creativity and limitless resources. What could go wrong? Let's take a step back and update our teleportation pyramid. The end gateways are a little bit above Ender Pearls, allowing much further teleportation. Above that is the end portal and the nether portal, allowing for teleportation across dimensions. It appears as though a few things are necessary for interdimensional travel, heat and extremely hard materials. Nether portals are built from obsidian and are clearly activated using the heat of fire. End portals also use heat in the form of lava and eyes of ender. Furthermore, end portal frames are indestructible in survival, much like bedrock. The hardest one to explain is the exit portal, which the Endermen used to leave the inn for the first time. It clearly satisfies the density requirement, but where does the heat come from? Some people are going to disagree with me on this part of my theory, but I think it's possible that the inn is much hotter than the overworld, although probably not as hot as the nether. There's never any day-night cycle, just constant light from the harsh sky. Instone also looks bleached, almost like an asteroid or the moon. So maybe the heat requirement wasn't quite as strict when they built the exit portal. I'm not completely sure, so if you have any ideas about this, let me know. Anyways, the Endermen at least had a speculative recipe for interdimensional travel. I think it's only natural that they began to wonder how far it could take them. They discovered the overworld and the nether, and now they had many more types of resources to play with. Would it be possible to use the recently discovered obsidian and heat to find a fourth dimension? A fifth dimension? A tenth dimension even? Their minds raced with anticipation. Perhaps they were only at the surface level of a very deep iceberg of possibilities. So they began to look for new ways to build a portal, using the requirements that they had discovered. Someone realized that a gas dropped a tear, which, when combined with an Eye of Ender, produced a mysterious new crystal. Could this be the breakthrough they needed? They got to work, mining obsidian from the overworld and building massive pillars in the end, hoping that this amount of dense material would be enough to create a portal to a new world. After weeks and months of construction, they were finally ready. One by one, they placed the end crystals on the obsidian pillars, lighting them on fire as they went. The Endermen waited with nervous excitement until the final crystal was placed. But disaster struck. Instead of a portal to wondrous new riches, a terrifying beast appeared. It was a dragon, fueled by the cosmic energy of the end crystals. It destroyed the exit portal, severing the connection between the end and the overworld and nether. It broke the end gateway, trapping the Endermen on the main island. 
In an instant, the Endermen were suddenly a fractured species, split between dimensions. Endermen in the overworld realized that they could never return to the end, so they removed Eyes of Ender from their portals in order to keep the overworld safe from the Ender Dragon. They destroyed their stashes of gas tears and sealed off the stronghold from the surface to prevent anyone from accidentally returning to the end. The Endermen were exiled, but they knew that they could at least keep the overworld and its inhabitants safe. Time passed, and the Endermen thought that they were forever separated from the other dimensions. But that wasn't true. The dragon was not immortal. Eventually, it died of old age, opening a portal back to the overworld. But it also dropped an egg, which would quickly spawn a new dragon like a phoenix from the ashes, empowered by the end crystals. The dragon head was used on end ships, which would allow the Endermen to quickly travel for the brief moments in time when the dragon was dead. No matter what they tried, however, the dragon would always respawn. They were never truly safe. So they lived in this cycle, trying to take advantage of the few moments where the dragon was dead and the portal opened. This was a purgatory of their own design. They tried to play God, but it was their downfall. This is the state of the Minecraft multiverse when the player starts a new game. So many years have passed that the nether portals have become broken, and only a couple Endermen remain in the overworld, with even fewer in the nether. New societies have developed, the simple-minded villagers, the scheming pillagers and illagers, and the jealous piglins. Strongholds have decayed and nether fortresses are overtaken by wither skeletons. Over time, the Endermen slowly lost their ability to build vast structures, only remembering how to pick up a few blocks. But somehow, in some way, the player appeared. The player was like the Endermen, capable of creating and destroying blocks in the world. The player was intelligent, unlike villagers. And the player was curious, exploring the world and building contraptions. Endermen in the overworld recognized this, only attacking if provoked and even trying to communicate with the player. It was no use, however. They could only hope that the player could figure things out on their own. Slowly, the player did, building vast structures, figuring out how to get to the nether, brewing potions, enchanting weapons, and eventually discovering the end portal. The player knew what they needed to do. They entered the portal, destroyed the end crystals, and killed the dragon once and for all, freeing the end from its eternal domination. So is the player a god? I'm not going to go that far, but I do think that in some ways they're the embodiment of the fundamentals of Minecraft, creating and destroying the world. From a lore perspective, we don't know why the player spawned suddenly, in the same way we don't know why Chorus Tree started growing or why Endermen started in the end. At the end of the day, however, I think Minecraft is about the player. The player does everything the Endermen can do, but better. And ultimately, the player defeats the dragon, freeing the Endermen from their crucial mistake. And that's my theory. There was a lot there, so let's recap. Endermen began in the end as intelligent, creative creatures. They discovered that Shulkers produced Ender Pearls with teleportation properties. They created cities using the resources in the end, but they wanted more, so they developed a portal to the overworld. However, it was one way. The scouts learned more about interdimensional travel using nether portals and discovered that blaze powder could allow them to return to the end. With this knowledge, Endermen built huge structures to protect the portal back home and to farm blaze powder. But they got greedy, trying to build a bigger portal which accidentally spawned an ender dragon. It wasn't until the player came that they were freed from the cycle of death and rebirth. I think my theory explains the biggest mysteries of Minecraft. Where does teleportation come from? What is an ender pearl? Who built the strongholds, etc.? I know that this is going to be compared to map patch theory, so I might as well explain what I think the strengths of my theory are compared to his. MatPat approaches it from an Enderman first perspective, which initially makes sense as the Endermen are clearly very important. However, I've chosen a teleportation first perspective. This solves the biggest issue with his theory, where does the Ender Pearl come from? Now, to his credit, he recognizes this is a problem, but in my opinion, it's too big of a problem to ignore. I just can't find a way where the Endermen could develop teleportation in the overworld. At least in the end, there's precedent. The progression from Chorus Fruit to Shulkers to Ender Pearls has a lot of evidence, as I've explained. However, I'll be the first to tell you that my theory isn't bulletproof. The biggest problem is figuring out how the Endermen were able to make the portal out of the end. I'm not sure where the bedrock or even the torches came from. Honestly though, neither of us really has a good answer to how the Endermen discovered portal technology in the first place. In my theory, the Endermen learned through trial and error. It's like fire. Humans have used fire for hundreds of thousands of years, but it wasn't until relatively recently that we discovered exactly how it works the chemistry, the chain reactions, and the specific components necessary for flame. Similarly, the Endermen built their first portal without knowing exactly how it worked. 
but eventually they got much closer to learning the ingredients. Still, they didn't fully understand what they were doing and they accidentally spawned the dragon. Another minor problem with my theory is that shulkers don't actually drop ender pearls in game. If they did, then I'd be just about 100% confident in my ender pearl origin theory. One more question is why would the innermen need diamond armor and the like in the end? Why bring it over if they couldn't use it? I don't really know. There are a few odds and ends that I should mention. First, I think that endermites are a type of parasite that grows in shulkers alongside enderpearls. That's why endermen attack them. This happens in real life as well. Pea crabs can infest oysters and mussels. But what about silverfish? Why is there a silverfish spawner by the portal? My best guess is that it comes from some sort of a reaction with the nearby eyes of ender in the portal. Maybe silverfish are a mutated version of endermites? Spawners are a pretty complex topic from a lore perspective, so I'll save them for another video. Also, what are the elytra? Why would endermen need them if they could just teleport? I don't think these questions necessarily conflict with my theory, but they just might take some more thought to figure them out. So that's it. What do you think? Does it make sense or am I completely insane? Did I miss something important? Let me know in the comments, let's figure this out together. Oh, by the way, I'm starting a Discord server. Check out the link in the description. If you have theories or other interesting things, this would be a great place to discuss them. Also, tell me if you enjoyed the deep dive format. There's a lot of mystery to Minecraft, and I think deep dives are a great way to discover what's beneath the surface. Some of them will be more speculative, like today, and others will be more about obscure facts that people may not know. Anyways, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see everyone in the next video.